Salvo Studios is back with its biggest case ever with support for ITX, DTX, ATX, MATX, and even EATX motherboards, along with four PCIe devices, a large water reservoir, and dual 280 millimeter radiators. It sounds like it could be the be all case, but there is a reason why this is a limited run product. If you've seen Salvo Studio cases before, then you won't be surprised with the looks of the S700. Powder coated steel construction, aggressive cutouts for ventilation, customizable acrylic panels, and minimal front ports. It's an industrial rugged looking case, which may not suit everyone, but does look pretty good in my opinion. There are a fair amount of customization options on the acrylic, like extra cuts and even personalization, but by default, it only cuts holes for the PSU. Salvo Studios is a one-man operation though, so if you do need any customizations, you can reach out to Brian and he'll be sure to help you out. Like all cases though, it's not exactly perfect. There are a few things that could be improved with the design. The fan cuts are very good at allowing airflow, but if you don't have a fan or radiator installed, it does present a rather unattractive look into the case, especially in the front. This could be mitigated by installing a radiator in front, though if you are installing only one, it's normally better to install it on top. You could also look at installing a dust filter, but you'd have to get a custom one since the default 140 by 280 fan sizes is too small and Salvo Studios currently doesn't offer an official one, although they are looking into it. I also wish the audio ports in the front were labeled in some way. The right is input and the left is output, but since my headset is three pole, then none of them really works for me. The acrylic panels on the side give you a great view into the case, but at least on my unit still present a small gap in the middle of the panel, which is similar to the issue that was on the S402. Upping the screws from four to six would have helped mitigate this. The PSU side panel is significantly smaller than the main panel, which does give the case a non-symmetrical look since the panel juts out from the side. I'm sure there was a reason to not make the cutout the same on both sides and make the panels interchangeable, but I'm not really sure what that could be. You can custom order a full-size panel if you want the side to be symmetrical, but note the screw placements would stay the same. Building in the case is kind of like a mixed bag between building in a full-size case and a small form factor case. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward and easy, but the GPU requires a riser cable, which is pre-installed, as well as a bracket to hold it in place. If you want to use the PCIe on the back though, you will need a separate riser and that mounts upside down. If you've built a small form factor case before, this won't surprise you, but it is something to note. The only real place that the one man band nature of Salvo Studios is visible really is the USB hub on the front of the case. The board itself is pretty big and quickly becomes a mess of cables and adapters since it requires SATA power, audio cables, and a male and female USB cable to work. The design quirks are really just quibbles that will kind of vary between people. Building in the case is where it really becomes a little more specialized. To start off, this case was designed for water cooling, specifically custom loops. If you are planning on using water cooling, you are gonna to need to pony up for some custom cuts in the acrylic or plan on cutting them yourself. But if you're doing that, you're kind of missing out on the point of this case. The S700 is designed around 280 millimeter radiators with space for a large reservoir for a full custom loop. Salvo Studios even plans on offering bundles that include the reservoir in the future, but as of now, they're listed as sold out. With 560 millimeters of total radiator space, you can easily cool a beefy CPU and dual GPUs in a custom loop, which is awesome since that's precisely what this case is built for. If that is the setup that you want, then pretty much just stop the video right now and buy this case immediately. But if not, there are a few things you should know about. Unlike many other cases, the S700 is designed for only 280 millimeter rads. 120, 240 millimeter radiators or fans will not work unless you source a third party adapter. Already have a 280 millimeter AIO that you wanna use? Great, but just because you have one doesn't mean that it will actually fit in this case. The water block and fittings must be under 63 millimeters tall, which eliminated my use of the Deep Cool Castle 280EX. I also tried using the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 280, which it was just under the 63 millimeter limit, but unfortunately it has a slightly larger than normal radiator design, which meant I couldn't mount the radiator on top, though I could still use it up front just fine. In the end, I went with the NZXT X63 and that fit just perfectly. If you are looking to use a GPU with built-in AIO, you may want to reconsider since almost all of them will have a 120 or 240 millimeter radiator. 
But if you are open to converting your existing 280 millimeter AIO, there are ways of doing this, but that would kind of limit you to one GPU. Another design consideration is the PSU. The S700 is designed to work with SFX and SFXL PSUs only, which is common for a small form factor, but not so common with cases of this size. This can cause two issues. The first being the SFX cables are often shorter, so you may need to purchase extensions or custom cables depending on your configuration. In my case, with a Silverstone SX700 and an ASUS B450i Strix motherboard, I needed to extend my main 24 pin connector. The other issue is of capacity. The largest SFX power supplies now hover around 1000 watts. That's a pretty beefy power supply for sure, but if you are building and cooling a particularly power hungry rig that would need a lot of water cooling, like a Threadripper 3990X and two RTX 3090s, you'd easily eclipse that number even without overclocking. That is a very edge case to be sure, but it is one that will come up with people planning out a premium build. And that's exactly what this case is for, premium builds. Before this build, I was running an AMD Ryzen 3700X, which is a really good CPU, but not earth shattering. And that retails for about $300, which is the same price as this case. I'm now running a Ryzen 5950X, much more in line with what this case should be housing, but even then I'm still only using a single graphics card since dual GPUs don't really make sense for the workloads I handle. My build, while many would consider premium, is really more better suited for something like a Meshlicious than the S700. If you are looking to build a dual GPU system, then this should be on a very short list of cases for you to consider. Maybe even more so if you're considering a single GPU and something like a PCIe capture card or other PCIe device. The S700 really is for people who think a CPU, GPU, and PSU is just not enough. And if that's you, the S700 is a great option.